Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everyone. This is Pastor Fletcher Wright at the National Church. I want to welcome you to our Thursday night Bible study. Praise the Lord. And I want us to have prayer and get right in to the word tonight. Father, we honor you and we give you praise. Lord, it is such a privilege to get together, Lord, with the children of God, your covenant people, just to talk about your word. And Lord, I thank you tonight, Lord, for opening the eyes of our understanding, Lord, that you would reveal the truth that brings liberty and freedom into our lives. Lord, we thank you. You declare we're to walk in the light of your word and the entrance of your word that brings that light becomes a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Lord, anoint every listener to hear your word and anoint me this night to speak forth your word with simplicity, with accuracy, with boldness, with love. And Lord, I thank you for fluency of speech that I may freely convey your word to your people this night. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight. Praise the Lord. It's earlier today when I was, share, I was just praying about what to share tonight, I felt very uh, strongly to go back and this begin to talk about what I call God's greatest commandment. What would be God's greatest commandment? Well, we know that Jesus talked about the fact that he's given us a new commandment. Amen. And so I want to talk about that tonight. But uh, to begin tonight, I want to go all the way back in the Old Covenant into the book of Ezekiel. I love to go back into the Old Testament many times, and there you begin to see the prophets begin to prophesy and speak about what would be confirmed later in and through the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. We often talk about Isaiah being the Messianic prophet because he prophesied more about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ than any other Old Testament prophet. But here in the book of Ezekiel, we see uh, this prophet beginning to prophesy about the future. There was times when God would be in dismay concerning his people, Lord, where they would fail to walk in his statutes and keep his judgments and to walk in his commandments. Praise the Lord. But here I want us to look at a prophetic word that was given through uh, the uh, prophet Ezekiel about what God was going to accomplish in the future. And then we're going to go into the future, which is our present tense. It's been fulfilled in and through the Lord Jesus Christ. And what he accomplished, praise God, was spoken of even back in that day, in that particular time. Amen. So here in Ezekiel, matter of fact, uh, let me give you the reference in Ezekiel chapter 36. You can turn there or I will read that to you, just a couple of verses. I'm not going to go into all of the different details about what is going on here. But in uh, beginning in verse number 26, it says, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. Now this is talking about the future, and he's talking about what would happen in and through the redemptive work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So let me start again. A new heart will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes Hallelujah. That word cause there is actually, I'm going to give you the ability, praise God, to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Well, it's apparent that at that point in time, they were not keeping his judgments and they were not walking in his statutes. But God here is prophesying said that is all going to change. Hallelujah. Well, that is what I call good news. Amen. And so here we begin to see, and, and let me look at some of these words because we're going to see the fulfillment of these as we move on. So he said, a new heart I will give you 
and a new spirit will I put within you. Now, you do understand that you are not just a physical being. You are a trinity. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. But we find out if God creates us in his image and likeness, that God is a trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So it should be no surprise that you are also a trinity. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, I pray, God, that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So once again, he said, a new heart will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. Well, this reminds me of what Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3, where the, uh, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and began to have a conversation, beginning to question him about very important subjects. And the subject of the kingdom of God came up. And Jesus said, a man cannot even enter the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Unless he is born again. You see, that word originated with the Lord Jesus Christ. Nicodemus, not understanding, said, how can this be, Lord? Can a man enter into his mother's womb and be born again when he's old? But Jesus said, no, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So the new birth is not talking about the physical body. It is talking about the spirit man that lives on the inside of this physical body. We've talked in the past that Adam and Eve literally walked with God and literally that God created them after his image and likeness. Amen. The very life of God was resident within them. But Adam and Eve were born again from life to death when sin entered into the picture, amen. That does not mean they cease to exist as far as their spirit is concerned, but the life of God was diminished. The life of God departed. And so we find out that God promised a redeemer that would come. And here, Ezekiel is picking up on that particular prophecy given all the way by God in Genesis 3 where he said, the seed of the woman, Satan is going to bruise your head. And so here he said, a new heart will I give you and a new spirit, talking about the new birth, will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you. In other words, you're going to have your spirit is going to literally be born again and become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. And then said, not only that, he said, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments. Praise the Lord. Such a powerful word. Well, I want us to flip over into the New Testament, into the Gospel of John. In the Gospel of John, looking over in chapter 13. John's Gospel, chapter 13. And I want us to go all the way down to verse number 34. Now this, now we find out that Jesus has come. He's walking with his disciples. And then he makes a very profound statement here in John 13, verse 34. He says, a new commandment I give unto you. A new commandment. Literally, that word new there means something that has not existed before. He said, I give you a new commandment. Hallelujah. A new commandment I give unto you. Well, what is that commandment? That you love one another, praise God, as I have loved you. Oh, hallelujah, that you also love one another. A new commandment I give unto you. Hallelujah, that you love one another. Now, if we stop right there, a new command I, I give unto you, that you love one another. If we stop at that point in the middle of that verse, 
there's not anything new about that particular statement. He said in Leviticus 19, 18, he says, love thy neighbor as thyself. Oh, but he's not through in this particular verse. He said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Oh, now this is the new part. He says, I want you to love one another, not love your neighbor as yourself. Praise God. That is certainly true. He said, but he's taking it a little further. He said, I want you to love one another as I have loved you. Hallelujah. That you also love one another. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we begin to see here that he's talking about the new part, a new commandment, a new commandment, a new commandment. Praise God. And what is that new commandment? That you love one another even as I have loved you. Praise God. As I have loved you is a new commandment because, you see, that is new because that has never existed before. Praise God. Because, you see, up until this time, nobody had loved one another as Jesus loved us because we're going to find out that is talking about the God kind of love. It's talking about agape. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. It's not talking about human love. But he's talking about the God kind of love. Hallelujah. So up until this time, nobody has loved one another as Jesus loved us because that love did not exist. From the time Adam and Eve fell in the garden, yes, that love was in their relationship. It was in their heart. It was who they were. That was their identity. Praise God. But when that went out, we find out now that Jesus comes as our Redeemer. He came to redeem. What does that mean? He's going to restore what has been lost back to humanity. And so when he came on the scene, and we talked about it there in Ezekiel, Ezekiel began to prophesy about what was going to happen in the future. Praise God for that. He said, I'm going to give you a new heart, and I'm going to give you a new spirit, and I'm going to put my spirit within you and give you the ability to walk in my statutes and keep my judgments. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God for that. And so Jesus here is revealing that truth. He is the manifestation of that word spoken by Ezekiel. Hallelujah. What has he come to accomplish in our life? Hallelujah. Well, he's beginning to reflect upon that when he said a new commandment that I give unto you, not just that selfish human love, amen, but a new commandment that I give unto you that you love one another even as, even as I have loved you, praise God. And that word loved you there, praise God, is the word agape, the God kind of love. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So now we begin to see that Jesus is bringing something new, a new commandment I give unto you. Well, let's flip over. We're in God's, John's gospel. Let's flip over to chapter 17. And I want us to go down in verse number 26. Now, sometime I encourage you to read this whole chapter of chapter 17 in John's gospel, because Jesus is literally praying for us in this particular chapter. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And here in verse number 26, Jesus said, And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherein thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Oh, hallelujah. Now, let me tell you, Jesus is moving in the direction of the fulfillment of what Ezekiel prophesied. He's here now to perform that, to accomplish that, to activate that in the lives of humanity. Amen. So here, he's praying to the Heavenly Father on our behalf. 
And what is this prayer? We'll read the whole chapter sometime. It's so powerful. But verse 26, And I have declared unto them, talking about his followers, talking about humanity, I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherein thou hast loved me may be in them. This is future tense, but he's praying for us. Amen. Hallelujah. That the love wherein thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. What kind of love? The agape, the God kind of love. Jesus is praying for us that that love that was within him would be in us. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. We're not going to turn there, but in Romans 5, 5, it says there that, that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. What kind of love? The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Because you see, by the time you get to the book of Romans, now Jesus has already paid that price. He's redeemed us from sin. He's provided what we call the new birth. Hallelujah. And in that new birth, we once again become a partaker of God's divine nature. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to flip over for just a moment. Praise God to 2 Corinthians. Flip over there with me if you have your Bibles to 2 Corinthians and I'm going to go all the way over to chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Corinthians. Praise the Lord. Chapter 5, going all the way down in verse number 17. You're familiar with these verses of Scripture, I'm sure. But I'm going to go uh, back and reflect upon these and kind of bring this together. We're talking about our identity as far as God is concerned. Amen. Hallelujah. So here, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, going all the way down in verse number 17. It says, Therefore, if any man, or we could say any woman, be in Christ, he or she is a new creature. One translation says, a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are are become new. Oh, how, what did Ezekiel prophesy? I'm going to give you a new heart. I'm going to give you a new spirit. I'm going to put my spirit within you. Praise God. Give you the ability to keep my judgments and walk in my statutes. Hallelujah. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another even as I have loved you. Praise God. How could that be? How is that possible? Well, here it says, Therefore, if any man or woman be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things are become new. Now, is that talking about the physical man? No, Jesus told Nicodemus, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. When you are born again, physically speaking, if you were 30 years of age, guess what? You're still 30 years of age. If you weigh the certain uh, uh, weight on the scales, you'll still weigh the same on the scales. Amen. But you have become a new creation as far as your spirit being is concerned. The real you, your true identity, is not the physical man. It is the spiritual man that lives on the inside of you. The Bible talks about the hidden man of the heart. It talks about the outer man, the inner man. Well, praise God, we find out that when we are born again, we literally become brand new as far as our spirit being is concerned. Oh, hallelujah. Old things have passed away. The old nature, the old sin nature is passed away. And all things have become new. And I love this next verse. The first, the, uh, verse 18, the very first part there, it says, And all things are of God. 
in all things are of God. Hallelujah. In other words, I mean, let's think about it this way. When God created humanity all the way back in the book of Genesis, God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. When God created humanity, let me know we had absolutely nothing to do with that. It was all of God and nothing of man. That is very obvious, amen. But now we find out that sin has entered in to uh, humanity. Their relationship is broken, amen. And we find out the wages of sin is death, amen. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But now we find out that God had a plan to redeem humanity back to right relationship with him, amen. Hallelujah. And here we find out that through Jesus Christ, now, praise God, that we become a new creation. All things Spiritually speaking, or passed away. All things have become new. You, when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, spiritually speaking, you became a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. Praise God for that. And it goes on to say, old things have passed away, all things have become new, and all things are of God. In other words, we had nothing to do with our creation in Genesis and we had nothing to do with what God calls being a new creation in Christ Jesus. The new birth has nothing to do with the work of man. It has everything to do with God's grace being expressed on our behalf. Well, how I many of you know grace means this, that it is free on our part, but it costs God the price of his son. It goes on in the last verses here in verse 21. It says, For he hath made him to be sin for us. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Oh, my goodness. Let me tell you, that is a red letter scripture. Praise God. We need to mark it, highlight it draw stars around it. Hallelujah. This is God's love being expressed for us. God so loved, God so agape, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. And so that cost God the very life of his son. Amen. Even as Abraham offered up Isaac on that mountain. Amen. Hallelujah. But God did not allow him to take the life of Isaac, but it literally allowed that to proceed to the point that God counted it as accomplished. Amen. But then there was a realm in the bushes that took Isaac's place, a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says in Romans, he that spared not his own son, but offered him up for us all. How shall he not also with him freely give us all things and all things literally begins with the new birth, being born again, becoming a new creation in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so when it talks about the fruit of the Spirit, it's talking about that divine nature of God on the inside of you. It says there in Galatians 5.22, I love it over, I believe it's in the American Standard where it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, meekness, temperance, and faith. Oh, hallelujah. But the fruit of the Spirit, singular, is love. Agape. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Hallelujah. And if you literally, matter of fact, we won't turn there, but let me give you the reference over in Second Peter 1, 4, there where it talks about that we become partakers of the divine nature, talking about the nature of God, that through Jesus Christ, we become a partaker of his divine nature. That nature could be expressed and defined in and through the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Hallelujah. Now think about this. 
when you are born again, literally the love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. You become a new creation, old things passed away, all things become new, all things are of God. Hallelujah. So now, praise God, we begin to find out that in Ezekiel, God begins to prophesy to them that literally he's going to give them a new spirit. And he's going to put his spirit within them. And so that new spirit is in and through the new birth, being born again, a new creation in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. But God began to declare and prophesy through many uh, prophetic words in the old that there was going to come a time when God was going to give them a new covenant. Hallelujah. And God literally was going to give them a new commandment for that new covenant. But not only that, that God was going to make them a new creation and give them the ability, praise God, to walk in that new commandment. Now, what is the new commandment? A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another, even as I have loved you. Well, we didn't read that back, but the next verse there in John 13 said, by this, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you have love one to another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you have love one to another. In other words, how are all men going to know that we are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because we have love one to another. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. Now, once again, this is talking about agape, the God kind of love. Now, think about it this way. A new commandment I give unto you. So now in this new covenant, hallelujah, we have a new commandment. And what is that new commandment? that you love one another as I have loved you, that you walk in the agape, the God kind of love. Hallelujah. But in order for us to walk in that commandment, to keep that commandment, now we become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Think about that. A new covenant, a new commandment to rule over that new covenant in order for us to be able to walk in that new commandment, hallelujah, we have become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So Jesus gave this new commandment. To who? To those that are born again, those that become a partaker of God's divine nature. Now, humanity had God's divine nature. Oh, hallelujah. Back before sin entered into the picture. Now we have a redeemer through Jesus. He's come to redeem us back to right relationship with God. Hallelujah. Literally, he was made to be sin for us who knew no sin. He took our sin that we could be made the righteousness of God in him. Hallelujah. In other words, that that very nature of God could enter into humanity once again in order for us to be able to have faith in this new creation, in the work of God. It is all of God and nothing of man. Oh, hallelujah. If we had anything to do with it, it would be questionable to say the least. But I rejoice there when it said literally, and all things are of God, and all things are of God, talking about the new covenant, the new commandment, and the new creation in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. So now, in the new covenant, now let me tell you this. I love the Ten Commandments, but hey, you know those Ten Commandments were written on tablets of stone. 
Oh, hallelujah. Why is that true? Well, did you know from the time that Adam and Eve fell in the garden that no one experienced the new birth, the new creation in Christ Jesus until Jesus showed up, until he bore our sin. The wages of sin is what is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in and through the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God for that promise. So now we find out that he did not give us the Ten Commandments written on stone because, you see, they didn't have that new nature of love. Hallelujah. But now he's given us a new commandment that you love one another. Jesus said, even, even as I have loved you, that the very nature of God now is imparted into you. How it's reflected in and through the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Amen. Hallelujah. And so now we begin to see that God the Father has given us a new commandment. Do we have the ability to walk in that new commandment? Yes. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you have love one to another. What kind of love? A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. The agape, the God kind of love. Now, that is your nature. That is who you are in and through the new birth, being born again in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So his nature has been imparted to us once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. So now, praise God, that doesn't mean we do not honor the Ten Commandments. Praise God. Hallelujah. It was good in their time, in their uh, in their season. Amen. And I rejoice when I see them outside many times of, of a courthouse. You're there. They may have those tablets of stone, the Ten Commandments. Praise God. I praise God for it. Hallelujah. Yeah. And Praise the Lord for uh, the Ten Commandments. Amen. Hallelujah. But now we find out that he has written all oh, those commandments on our heart in and through the new birth, being born again. Hallelujah. And let me tell you this. If we have a new commandment for this new covenant, then the only sin today is to walk out of love. You cannot sin and walk in love at the same time. Hallelujah. So the only sin today is to walk outside of that love. Oh, hallelujah. And if we do so, then, then you know, we need to repent. He said, if we sin and we confess our sin, God's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, I mean, you know, I'm not talking about just any kind of love. And, you know, that word love can be expressed in a lot of different ways. You know, today we talk about, you know, we love our car and we love our house. We live, we love this. We love our uh, wife, we love our puppy. I mean, we just throw that word love around everywhere. But it was not that way in the Greek language because there were different levels and different expressions of love. You remember when Jesus was talking uh, to Peter? This was after the resurrection and Jesus was wanting to restore Peter back into right relationship with him. And there was a conversation began to take place. And Jesus said to Peter, Peter, do you love me? And Peter responded, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And then he asked him again, Peter, do you love me? And uh, Peter responded again. And, and then Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? Three different times. And we've often heard people say, well, uh, Peter had denied him three times and Jesus was giving him an opportunity to reconcile all of those to kind of get that cleared out of the way and restored back again. I have no argument with that whatsoever. But let me tell you what Jesus is saying there. The first two times he said, Peter, do you love me? He used the word agape. Do you love me with a God kind of love? But Peter responded saying, Lord, you know that I love you. But he used the word phileo there, which is a friendship kind of love. 
And then Jesus asked him again, do you love me? Do you uh, agape me? And uh, Peter once again responded, Lord, you know that I fillet you, that I love you. We're referring to friendship kind of love. But then Jesus, that third time, he said, he used that word, um, phileo. In other words, he came down on Peter's level. Because, you see, I believe Jesus understood this, that Peter at that point in time was not yet born again. Hallelujah. He had not yet become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. But we find out, hallelujah, that he was prophesying about what would happen in his life. Amen. That there's going to come a time when you can agape me. You can love me with a God kind of love because that would become his nature. And if you are a born again child of God, that is your nature. You say, oh, but pastor, you don't know how many times I've made mistakes and I haven't lived up to the love of God. Well, that doesn't change your identity. It's just identifying a few times when we didn't live up to our nature and who we are. That's the reason why fruit grows, amen? We can grow stronger, praise God, in that. Hallelujah. Jesus doesn't beat you up because you're not walking in the fullness of that, amen? But it's where we begin recognizing our identity, recognizing who we are as his child. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. A commandment. Let me just give you this definition of a commandment. And one person said it is a mandate, but let me use the word commandment. It's an order from God from which there is no retreat, about which there is no choice. That is a commandment, a mandate from God. Hallelujah. Praise God. A new commandment that I give unto you. Amen. And praise God. In other words, where you're measuring up now or not, this is our standard. This is our goal. This is what we're moving uh, toward. Amen. That we want that love perfected in us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so in other words, we always have a goal. We have something to aim for, praise God. And that is to let that fruit of the Spirit on the inside of us, that new nature that has been imparted through the new bird to continue to grow, that we can reflect that fruit in a greater expression as we continue to grow and mature in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So he's given us the commandment Praise God. But now think about this for a moment. If God gives you the commandment to walk in love, but he doesn't give you the ability to fulfill that commandment, then God would be unjust. But good news, any commandment God gives you in his word, he will give you the ability to keep and to walk in that commandment. If God says that we're to walk in faith, then guess what? God is going to give us faith to walk in. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. He said over in Romans 12, 3, that he's dealt to every man, every woman, the measure of faith. Praise God. So God is not going to tell you to walk in faith. And it says the just shall live by faith. It says that we walk by faith and not by sight. And so if God gives that commandment to us, hallelujah, to walk in faith, that means that God has placed himself in a position of responsibility to give us faith in order to keep that commandment. Hallelujah. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hallelujah. But the good news is this. God has given us faith, and that faith can grow. We can cause that faith to become stronger. Hallelujah. As we continue to feed on the word and to walk in that word in Jesus' name. So any commandment he gives us, God is going to give us the ability to keep that commandment. So when he said, 
literally a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. By this shall all men know that you're my disciple, that you have loved one to another. Praise God. That means immediately, once God gave that commandment, then God has taken on the responsibility to give us the ability to walk in that commandment. Hallelujah. And now that divine nature of God, who is God? God is love. God is love. God does a lot of things, but God is love. That is his character. That is his nature. And you came out of the Father, praise God. You are his child. And that nature that was lost through sin has been restored through the redemptive work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And now, praise God, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's flip over uh, to the book of Romans for just a moment. Romans chapter 13. Oh, my goodness. Oh, hallelujah. I just looked at my watch. Praise the Lord. I can see immediately this is going to be a two-part message. Praise the Lord. But I love this message because so many times we get down on ourselves. We lose our identity. We begin to uh, literally allow the enemy to convince us that we are inferior in some form or fashion. But God started all of us out the same way through the new birth. Hallelujah. Born again, a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things passed away. Behold, all things become new, and all things are of God. Hallelujah. And praise the Lord for that. Amen. But looking over in Romans 13, let's go all the way down to verse number 8. It says, O oh, no man anything but love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Hath fulfilled the law. Hallelujah. Let me tell you this. It says over in Galatians, we don't have time to turn there. It says literally that the law was added until the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Jesus being that seed, that promise. Hallelujah. The law was added until the seed should come to whom the promise was made, referring to Jesus Christ. Praise God. The law was added until Jesus would show up. Because let me tell you this. At one point, Jesus said, I did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. He said, not one jot or tittle of the law will pass away until all be fulfilled. But let me tell you this. Love fulfilled the law and therefore the law hallelujah has now been replaced by the very nature of god on the inside of every born again child of god hallelujah praise the lord and so jesus came and the and remember our scripture from our youth god so loved the world he gave his only begotten son love fulfills the law. We do not walk under the law today. Hallelujah. Jesus fulfilled that law. But what we do walk under is a new commandment, a new commandment, the agape commandment. The God of love has given us a commandment that we would walk in the nature he's imparted to us through the new birth. And praise God that now, Hallelujah. We have that ability. Amen. But here in verse 8 again, Oh, no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Oh, no man anything but love one another. You know what he's saying there? If you have a debt in the natural, pay off that debt. Hallelujah. If you can't pay it off at one time, make payments on it until it's paid off. Amen. Hallelujah. When your power bill comes in, hallelujah, praise God, pay your power bill. Amen. Your mortgage is due, pay your mortgage. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it says literally you owe no man anything. And if your payments are called up today, you don't owe it. It's called up today. Amen. But praise God. But that's uh, 
in the natural, owe no man anything but to love one another. You know what that's indicating? There is one debt. Now, the debt of sin, Jesus paid that all for us. Now, how many you know that is good news? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. Jesus paid that debt off for us. He was made to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteous of God in him. Hallelujah. But there is a debt that we will never pay off, and it's the debt of loving one another. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another even as I have loved you. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you have love one to another. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So our debts in the natural, we want to pay off those debts. Amen. Oh, no man anything but to love one another. Jesus loved us. Hallelujah. Now he said, if you want to prove you're my disciples, you go out. And with that same God kind of love, you love one another. And by that, by that love, others are going to see and recognize that you are my disciples. But because of works and good deeds, no, those are good in their place. But he's talking about the love of God being expressed in and through your life is going to be the evidence that you are his disciple. You are a child of God. So there's one debt we will never pay off, and that is the debt of walking in this new commandment that we love one another, even as he has loved us. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's look down in verse 10 while we're there. It says, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. What did we say? He's given us a new commandment. The only sin in the new covenant, hallelujah, in this new commandment is to walk out of love. Because if we walk in love, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Praise God. As long as we're walking in love, hallelujah, now don't pervert this love, the agape the God kind of love, hallelujah, praise the Lord. But we find out that, praise God, as long as we're walking in love, hallelujah, we are going to walk and fulfill that new commandment, amen, hallelujah. Let's back up here into chapter 12 for just a moment, Romans chapter 12, and, and let's just continue on this theme here, and I'm fixing to close out and pick up next week. I still have a, a lot of things to say about this we haven't got to yet, praise the Lord. But, and you know, when we walk in faith and believe in God, this commandment of love is so important. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that literally that we, uh, that uh, faith works by love. Faith works by love. Faith works by love. If we walk out of love, then our faith is not going to work. Amen. Well, praise God, that's for next week. And we're going to share several other things next week of importance. But here we're talking about this subject here of uh, walking in love. Hallelujah. And in verse 20 of chapter 12, it says, Therefore, if an enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. I hear Kathy say often, the only way we will ever overcome evil is through good. The only force greater than evil is good. Well, you heard it out of her own mouth. Hallelujah. The only force greater than evil is good. Hallelujah. Well, we see the word confirming that. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. 
Hallelujah. But it's talking here and it continues to talk about, oh, no man anything but to love one another. Love worketh no will to his neighbor. Therefore, love is a fulfilling of the law. I heard a rather humorous story uh, sometime back of, about this woman. She was uh, a faithful church attender, but apparently she missed one particular service where the pastor was talking about, you know, uh, you know, that love is the highest law and that we should respond, not uh, if someone does evil or does, uh, uh, you know, bring some injustice against us that we don't, you know, try to bring evil against that evil. We overcome evil with good. Amen. Hallelujah. And just talking about the fact, you know, of this scripture here said, therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. And now I believe in my interpretation here is just talking about you're going to bring conviction upon their life. Hallelujah. But praise the Lord. But anyway, uh, the pastor had been preaching on these scriptures about the power of walking in love. And when someone does evil against you, then respond by doing something that is good because Praise God that we overcome evil with good. But anyway, she went in and she'd been having a challenge with her husband and she was telling the pastor about all the uh, bad treatment she'd been receiving from her husband and all of the things he had been doing that was wrong in her eyes. And, and after uh, she uh, finished all of that, uh, the pastor said, well, have you tried heaping coals of fire upon his head? Well, unfortunately, she had missed that previous Sunday sermon and she had missed the context of his statement and because he was talking about overcoming evil with good and when someone does evil, do good, praise God. Hallelujah. And she was complaining about her husband. He's doing all these bad things. The pastor said, well, have you tried heaping coals of fire upon his head? And she responded by saying, well, no said, I did pour some boiling water on him, but that didn't seem to help. Well, how many of you know it doesn't pay to miss some of our sermons? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Walk in love. Hallelujah. That is the greatest law. As a matter of fact, we didn't go there maybe next week, but we talked about the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5.22, and it goes on to say, for that is the highest law. The greatest law Hallelujah, is the law of love. Nothing has the ability to overcome that law of love. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord, our time is up. Hallelujah. I want us to pick up here next week and talk about this commandment. Hallelujah. What are we talking about? Well, he prophesied that there's coming a time that I'm going to give you a new covenant. Has that been accomplished? Yes, we have a better covenant in and through the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And he said, I'm also going to give you a new commandment. Has he accomplished that? Yes, Jesus said, a new commandment have I given unto you. A new commandment give unto you that you love one another even as I have loved you. Amen. Hallelujah. So he's given us a new covenant. He's given us a new commandment to rule over that new covenant. But in order for us to be able to walk in that commandment, now we have become a new creation in Christ Jesus, born again. Hallelujah. And we find out that now we have become a partaker of his divine nature. God is love. And now through that love imparted into your life, your very nature, now you're a new creation, and therefore he's given you the ability to walk in that commandment of love. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this night, and we give you praise. Lord, we love your word, and Lord, we thank you, Lord. You are the greatest encourager. Lord, you never beat us over the head and bring condemnation into our life. But Lord, you're always there to point us back in the right direction. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, even as we continue next week to talk about, Lord, the power of love and this new commandment that you have given unto us. Lord, we thank you. We give you the praise that through love, 
Lord, we overcome evil with good because good is one of the attributes of love. Hallelujah. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, meekness, temperance, and faith. Lord, we thank you, Lord, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you so much for being uh, with us tonight. Amen. I want to invite you to come to church Sunday morning. If you're out of the area, go to church. Praise God. Get involved in a good place uh, where they preach the word and the help. Praise God. Worship unto our God. Amen. Hallelujah. We've started our church services at National. We've moved it from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Praise God. And so come out and join us if at all possible. Thank you for your financial support, supporting the ministry. If you're not able to be in church, then you can pick it up on ncglive.com or on YouTube or on Facebook. Amen. But until next week, God bless you. And praise God. Just know who you are. You are a child of God, born again, a partaker of his divine nature, and that nature is love. That is your true identity, and do not let anyone talk you out of your true identity in Christ Jesus. Amen. God bless you, and we'll talk again next week.